I get this question a lot and it honestly has multiple answers depending on the kind of person you are, how patient you can be, where you live, and your surrounding market for how much should I sell my PC? I'm making this video for one specific reason, and that's because it seems like after every Craigslist video airs on this channel, I get several people asking how much they should be selling their PCs for. And for one, I don't know where you live, so if you live outside the US, I have no idea how those markets look. I don't know what you should you know, expect to pay new for, for said components or said build, and, and let alone used. I don't know how your used market is at all. There are several factors to consider. Again, we're gonna cover those in this video, uh, but for one, if you live outside the US, there's really no point asking me what you should sell your PC for because I have no idea what your foreign market looks like. Uh, as for US sellers, it's still not a black and white answer because someone in upstate New York might be able to get way more for their used system than someone in, say, Southern California. So, yeah, again, it's not black and white, and I'm going to seek to cover the variables to consider in this video. The Corsair Ironclaw RGB Wireless sports a custom 18,000 DPI PixArt sensor, which you can adjust in, get this, one DPI increments, along with 50 million click tried and true Omron switches. Use the 10 built-in buttons to fully customize your gaming experience and enjoy beautiful zone RGB lighting for a fresh aesthetic in any setup. Grab an Ironclaw RGB Wireless today from your favorite retailer via the links below. So let's throw out a hypothetical and we'll assess its viability through several different pretexts. Also, we're going to assume that you're selling in the US market, although you should be able to extend these principles across pretty much any developed country's market. So first up, here's our hypothetical. I want to assume that the seller in question has a modest build. Let's say it's a locked 6th gen Core i5 build with a stock cooler, a GTX 1060 6 gig, 8 gigs of RAM, 500 watt PSU, 500 gig SSD, and an NZXT S340. If I went and found all of these parts on, say, eBay, what do you think I could build it for? Now, I know I wasn't super specific on the parts used, like 500 gig SSD, 500 watt power supply, that's not, you know, enough. It's not what I would expect to find in a Craigslist ad. I want specific components so I can actually go out and price this out. But let's assume I did that and I found from reputable sellers all the parts and I could build this exact system for 500 USD. So that's not bad. And look, this system could play pretty much anything in 1080p. I'm not saying you get 144 FPS out of it under all circumstances, especially from newer titles. We are gonna be limited to an extent with the quad core architecture from our Core i5, but it's a decent system, again, for 500 bucks. So does that mean then that the seller should ask 500 USD for his or her system on say eBay or Craigslist? The answer is no. It's your job as the seller to be greedy. Now, hold on, Greg. You're always harping on these Craigslist ads, or these people asking way too much money. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you tell people to do exactly what you preach against in your Craigslist series? And, okay, first off, 500 bucks versus $600 is nowhere near worthy of a dedicated Craigslist video on Science Studio. I'm not sure about other channels out there, but I'd say 600 bucks is a decent starting point. And look, you, you shouldn't go into this expecting to get exactly what you ask for. Expect some haggle. That's the joy of the used market. It's fun. And if both sides come out a little disappointed, then it was a good deal overall. On top of that, asking 600 bucks for a $500 system or $1,000 for an $800 system, heck, or even $3,000 for a, a $600 system. Like none of that is a crime. It's the seller's job to maximize profit. And obviously $3,000 for a $600 system is a bit outrageous and that might make its way into a Craigslist video here on this channel. But again, there's nothing illegal going on there. I would never fault someone for making a ton of money on a sale unless they use some deceptive ploy or misled the buyer when that sale occurred. At which point I would call you you know, a few names. Most of the Craigslist ads I feature on this channel pack two key elements, an insanely high asking price and overconfidence. The seller either overinflates the performance metrics or ridicules potential buyers, maybe even both. But that in combination with the high asking price is just a bit ridiculous to me. By asking $1,000 though for a $500 system and then just listing specs, that's not really much to critique. I mean, in terms of price, yeah, I could run through each of the components and say this is worth a lot less, but that would make for a fairly boring video. And I would almost even argue that if the seller sells that said $500 system for $1,000, that the buyer probably deserved to be scammed because it's the buyer's job 
to do due diligence, investigate the prices of used components in order to make an informed purchase decision. If you're not going to buy new and expect retailers to price things fairly, then you take that burden upon yourself as the buyer in the used market to do the research. If you're uncomfortable with this task or you're just too lazy or maybe you just don't know how to research effectively in your market at this point, I would almost always encourage you to buy new. And this ties into my second point. No two markets are the same. I could sell our $500 NZXT system in Florida for 600 bucks, whereas in California, that same system might sell for 550 or 540. It all depends on the availability of parts and used market saturation. If several people are selling similarly spec systems and they're all independent of each other, then there might be a fair degree of competition and prices might be driven a bit lower. That's good for the buyer. I can say that as a Florida resident, there aren't too many places to buy new components, save Best Buy, and Best Buy is kind of a stretch there. I mean, sometimes they have decent stock of especially peripherals, but maybe not CPUs or graphics cards, and other times they have absolutely nothing or are totally out of stock of those components. So uh, Best Buy is not a very reliable place, I would say, to buy most of your components. Although it is an option and probably one of the only options if you do live in Florida. We used to have a Tiger Direct here, I believe. We don't have any micro centers. I think the closest one is in Atlanta. That's a five hour drive for me and about a 15 hour drive from Miami. So this particular situation might drive the prices of used components up, right? Because the availability of new components is rather low. It's all simple supply and demand economics. I'm not gonna bother going through all of that in this video, but you should know that if the supply of something is low, then the price is generally going to go up in response. Now, my third point has to do with patience. How long are you willing to sit on a build or component as the seller? So if you're looking to move inventory fairly quick, you might want to sell your PC for 520 bucks or 530 bucks, maybe even exactly what you paid for it, $500, right? In this context, that's okay. If you want to just move through components and try out new things, that's a totally viable practice. In fact, that's what I did as a Young Science Studio channel about two or three years ago when I was in college. That was the only way for me to move through inventory without having to shell out tons of money and never really see any of that return, save subscribers and viewership, which at that point was not really funding much at all. So in the good old days, yeah, that was how I always had new components on hand because uh, I was willing to buy parts and build systems, sell them on Craigslist, again, for most of the time, small markups. I think the first build uh, I sold for 550 and it cost me 500. The next build was about $600 and I sold that for, pretty sure I broke even on that one. Uh, and I started to learn the market, right? And this goes back to the, the, the fact that every market is going to be slightly different. Um, RGB was a big thing back then and uh, still is today. I mean, it's even bigger, I would argue now. So that was something I tried to include in most of my builds. Again, I always factored that into the budget and I expected to get small returns on that. Uh, but sometimes I did have to break even. Now, other times I made huge profits. Uh, I made 150 bucks, I think, on one sale. It was a $650 system. I sold it for $800. Does that make me a, a greedy person? Yeah. Did I just call myself greedy? Yeah, but not in a ridiculing sort of way. I'm more or less kind of making light of the situation. The fact is, sellers are supposed to maximize profit. Does that make you a bad person? Absolutely not. Not in my book. Buyers are supposed to be frugal. You're supposed to save as much money as possible. Does that make you a bad person? Absolutely not. Are you a bad person for lowballing somebody? No, unless it's an insanely low lowball. Like if it's a thousand dollar system used and you offer 200 bucks for it, you probably deserve to be called you know, an a-hole. But if you offer something like $800 for the $1,000 system, there's nothing wrong with that. Even if the buyer, excuse me, the seller says, firm, $1,000, no less, you can still offer less because they'll probably take less. Nine times out of 10, they'll probably take a little less than their firm bottom dollar. Now, while sellers can be scumbags in the sense that they can overinflate and kind of overhype their builds, it's a 4K 60 FPS gaming PC all around, but it actually has a Core i3 and a GTX 750 Ti in it. You know what I'm talking about. We see a few of those on the channel every now and then. The buyer could also be scummy in the sense that the buyer could, let's say, show up to the public place where you're supposed to exchange the PC for the money. Let's say you agreed on 550 bucks, and then the buyer says, oh, uh, I only have 450 bucks in my pocket. Looks like, uh, yeah, we're just gonna have to do 450 instead. No, that, that's just you being a scumbag. If you gave your word to the seller uh, over a certain price, and then you showed up with less than that, conveniently, then uh, you're just being a scumbag. And at that point, if I was a seller, I would just walk away. You're not worth my time, blacklist the number, never deal with that person ever again. Do the right thing, and if you agree on something in text, it's just good practice to follow through. You know, you're not contractually bound to that. You're not gonna, at least in my opinion, be sued for something like that. That would be a little 
insane. Uh, if everyone was sued for lying, there would be lawsuits all over the place. And they're kind of are, but you know, it's just the US. But yeah, don't be a scumbag. If you're gonna buy something and you agree on a price over text, bring that money with you. Don't try to haggle last minute, like show up with less money in your pocket or some BS. It's just not worth it. If you're gonna pay something, agree to pay it over text, over the phone, show up, get the exchange done with, and move on, okay? It's just, it's not worth it. Like that 50 bucks you might save is just not worth it. You're gonna probably end up walking away with nothing. Sellers, if this happens to you, walk away. It's, it's worth it. Look, if you got one guy to already meet you for that sale at that agreed price, you'll probably find someone else in your area to do it who's not gonna be as scummy. But all right, that's how I wanna close this one. I'm not gonna tell each and every one of you how much you should sell your PCs for. So. Yeah, stop asking. <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude, but I can't tell you because for one, I don't know where you live. I don't know your market. I don't have the time to research your local Craigslist and see what other people are asking for their parts and monitor whether or not they're actually selling those goods for those asking prices. I have no idea. There's no way I could log all of that. I just know my area in particular. If someone lives around me and asks me, that's a different story, but I'd rather it be personal. Uh, and not via Facebook Messenger or Twitter or something else. But again, I want to re-emphasize the fact that as the seller, it is your job to maximize profit. If you are selling a system, don't ask what you think it's worth from used parts alone. Ask a little more than that. You need a starting point. If you expect people to haggle, it would be dumb to start at the place that breaks you even. Consider this. Let's say you have one offer for your $500 system at 600 bucks and another offer for $700. Maybe you told both of them that you had two different offers for the same price, right? And one of them said, well, screw it. If he's only offering 600 bucks, I'll offer 700 for it, which takes $700. You would be crazy not to take $700 for that PC. Does that make you a bad person? Absolutely not. Should you choose the $600 offer because you'd feel bad if you took the $700 offer? No, that, that's like, get that out of your mind. That's not a good way to approach business at all. It's not a good way to uh, approach life in general. Maximize profit, there's nothing wrong with that. You're being greedy, yeah, but in the used market, you kind of have to be. There's a lot of competition, there's a lot of scumbags out there. You gotta know how to navigate the waters. I hope this video helps you, to a small extent at least, and if you have any other questions, I encourage you to leave those in the comment section below. Also, I encourage you to leave a thumbs up or thumbs down on this video, depending on how you felt about it, the information contained within. If you haven't subscribed already, you're missing out, click that red subscribe button. Become a member if you're feeling especially fancy and want those extra perks, and we'll catch you in the next one. This is Science Studio, thanks for watching, and thanks for learning with us.